We don't even stop to think if God's pleased in it or not. We just sit there and say, you know what? Well, everybody's doing it. You know, God has mercy and grace. It's no wonder we're getting so far away from God. And no wonder we don't feel His presence like we used to. And no wonder we don't see signs and miracles like we used to. Because look at us. We're free and preached right out of the things that God wanted us to hold sacred with Him because He loves us. We don't even think like that. Yeah. That's explicit what you were just saying. The devil works in small steps. He, he does, he's not... I, I don't know about y'all, but I haven't really met the devil yet. He hasn't really gotten in my way or in my face that I'm aware of. And so I've always met, always figured the devil was the guy way up in the, in the clouds and he's pulling the strings to basically get us that one, oh, well, nudity in movies. Well, yeah, back in the 60s and 70s, that was like, ooh, wow, there's game. Oh, we won't go to that movie. But now, nowadays, it's like it's a mandatory thing. Yeah. I mean, it's always the little steps. That's what he does to get, to make us fall. Because it's, uh, what is it? Sin is like a cancer. Because once it gets into you and it just spreads, but it usually starts off slow and small until it gets established. And then it goes hog wild. And so th that's how I picture the devil coercing and seducing mankind. Well, I want to I share something with you guys, and I'm sure you guys will agree. It used to be that a person that was a drug, drug addict or a prostitute or an alcoholic, gangbangers, people like this, they used to walk into church services that we would be at, feel the power of God, and gang men would walk up like this. I've been in church services where they would take out guns and lay them on the altar. I've been there. I've been in church services where people take packs of cigarettes out and put them down there and, and never pick them up again. I've been in church services where drug addicts and people that do stuff like that and alcoholics, they put that stuff down under the power of God and never to pick up that stuff again because the church was so focused on that when you came in, they felt something and they said, you know what, I don't know what kind of thing this is in here, but this is greater than anything that I've ever experienced. But if you're watching lately, have you been watching? I'm not just bagging on our church. I'm, not, I'm talking about everybody's church. Watch this. People come in and they leave with the same stuff. That ought to tell you. We leave with the same stuff. How is it that somebody so desperately needs God comes into our assembly and leaves exactly the same, having laid down nothing? That's scary. As much as I want to thrash us, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. People are not getting changed like they used to. But it's up to us. I don't want to leave us with doom and gloom. It's up to us to bring that back. And can I tell you something? It's not popular. Scott said it the other day. It was so perfect. He said, he said we're going to get people and we're going to lose them. And I looked at him and I said, what are you talking about? He said, because laying on hands like we do in the front, that's not popular anymore. Everybody, he, said, he said, when the church runs, it gets excited and just, he said, it's not popular anymore. People are going to tune in or they're going to walk in and they're going to say, wait a second, I don't see this stuff anymore. It's up to us, the church that knows better, to say, you may not see it, you may not experience it. It may not be anything that you've ever seen before, but you're sure not about to take that away from the church. Yep. Because we will not let that go. Because we may be in a fallen, backslidden state. Can I say that? Yes, I can. But it doesn't mean that God can't put life into those dead bones again. That's right. And he will. And he will. I believe as long as we show up, and as long as we put our time in, and as long as we try to open the heart and say, God, things aren't right, but begin to work on that and not play games, 
I believe that God can do something. But it's no wonder why we keep getting and losing and getting and losing. And people walk in and they can't stand being here because when they walk in, it's a spiritual hospital. And when you walk in, you're going to get fixed and you're going to get healed and you're going to get delivered. Or this is not going to be the place for you. Right. It's not going to, this will never be the type of church where you just slide in and everything's okay and we just say, it's okay. It's not us that's telling you you got to get out. It's God that said, if you're going to step into the spiritual house of God, I'm going to change something to where you want to Come on. Get uncomfortable. And this is why our church will never, ever, ever be popular. It never will. Because Scott keeps saying, we're, we're going to be on, the, you know, on a big platform someday. And maybe we will. And maybe we, maybe we will preach the thousands. And maybe our church will grow until all this. But I can tell you this, as soon as we get there, it's not a popular message. Because Jesus' message was not a popular message. Yep. He was great when the miracles and signs and wonders were happening, but the closer he got to the cross, everybody started to leave. That's right. That's right. And here's the thing. You and I have to get our butts on the cross. Yeah, we don't like that. We don't like that. Clap is not as loud when we say that, because that means that I have to die daily. Where'd you find that, Pastor? What scripture? It's in the New Testament. Yeah. Oh, Take up your cross. And die day. I don't like that. You don't like that. But it's true. Before Jesus comes, I'm going to have to die to my flesh. Or I'm going to have to expect my outcome. And my outcome will be that I don't make it. Because I can't give to both. It's not going to work. Listen to me. I'm almost done. It's okay to stumble, to fall. And Lord knows in the Bible we have our examples of people making the most catastrophic mistakes. The difference is they got him back before it mattered more. And if they didn't, we read about it in Scripture. I don't believe Solomon got it right when his life was over. But I do believe that Samson did. I don't believe that there's some of the, some of the people you read in Scripture that when, when their life was over, that they had they were right with God and didn't make it. But I believe there were a lot that did. As much as Peter messed up, messed up all the time, at the end of his life was the greatest thing that he had ever done for God. Does anybody know what that was? No. It wasn't the message he preached. What was the greatest thing in his dying that he did? Did, what did, you, did you guys know that he was the most prideful man? The most stubborn man? Do you guys know that? Do you know the message that he sent when he died? You guys should know. When he was going to, to die, he was died crucified. And he said, you can't put me upright like this on a cross like my Lord and Savior. He said, I'm not worthy to be compared. Turn that thing upside down. That's how I'm going to die. They say that that was the most painful death of all, was to die on a cross upside down. That was the greatest moment of his life, besides preaching in that. Because pride was gone, stubbornness was gone, and the only thing left was there was love for his sake, enough to say done it my way for so long, but at the very end, I learned how to do it this way. That's all that I hope for. That's all that I can hope for right now. If I may stumble and struggle all the way through, but at the very end, I hope and pray that I am right. Because that's the time that matters most. That will be the time that matters the most. And if you're really thinking right now, I used to be impressed with all the other big churches and this and that and all the things that's going on. Are people's lives being changed? We got a guy that comes to this church every couple weeks. And if he's not, I don't want to say that, I'm not going to say that. Um, but he goes to one of the most largest, powerful churches that we see. Where's the change? 
If the church is so great there, where's the change? We have more change in this little church right here than churches with thousands. Because we're never going to be popular. And Jesus was not popular. Are we anything like him? Not at all. What I'm saying is, we're going to find a way, whether it's 20 of us, 100 of us, 1,000 of us, or 100,000 of us. We're going to preach the same when we get there, that we're going to have to change. We are going to have to change to be like Him. That's it. Any questions, comments before we close? Yes. What did that have to do with the other kind of problems? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. Actually, had a lot to do with it because as this all wraps up, I think that it puts a mirror on it on us to let us know where we're at as an individual. Where am I? If this thing takes place, wraps the pick, Where am I? And here's the other thing too. I was tripping out on when he's talking about the video. He is so sure that we're going to see the coming of Christ in this generation. You guys, can you even wrap your minds around that? That, Like, if you stop and, like, we can say, okay, it's going to come this, it's going to be in our generation, but really stop and try and think that Jesus, he's so sure that he's going to come in this time that we're going to see it. So we're going to see all the stuff that's in Revelation, that we're the generation to see that. That's insane. Yeah. Complete insanity because we've been reading about it all our lives and we hear about it, but to actually think that this group of people right here, we're going to see all that stuff, that's, that's mind-blowing. And he is dead set, dead sure, dead sure. And the signs, it seems like it all is. I mean, every generation, like we've been saying, always thought it was, but we have more um, in tune with the book than most. So... Yeah, more prophecies being fulfilled. So to yeah. really, can you stop and, I mean, that's crazy. We're going to see, if he's right in these, yeah. if, what we're feeling, we're going to actually see it. But it's, it, it, it's super scary. Like, it's super gnarly. Like, we're going to see that stuff and like, man. But if that being said, whether it is or it isn't, we need to switch our minds to... To really put ourselves in that, just in case it is, we need to be prepared, and we need to help other people be prepared, and we need to stop fooling around. That's what I was going to say, too. Take all the time that you need to get your heart and yourself right, and then as soon as you get it together, and you, or you think you get it together, we'll never have, fully have it together, but until you think you've got enough together to where you can make a difference, now it's time to work on other people. Yes. Because there's so many people in this world that are so deceived by these other big churches that are pacifying them with, you don't have to change anything. Just love him and believe on him. And grace, the whole grace movement. And it's such and grace a, and mercy and yeah, all of that. And, and all, of, all of those things are true, but it's not in context of what salvation is. There's more to it. There's more to a relationship between one person and another. There's definitely more to it between you and your relationship with your God. Let me ask, let me ask you guys a question. Be honest. Raise your hand. We I'm raise my hand first. Do you guys remember a time in your life where you were doing something wrong and you felt you felt it, you knew it, and you were convicted of it, and you were afraid? Anybody ever have one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? Raise my feet on it. Be honest. Do you feel that way now? Be honest. Do you feel that way? That right there should be the most awakening thing, anything that I've said tonight. Not because it's me. But there used to be a time when you would, you would be afraid that God would be upset and that you would miss heaven over something you did. Why? Do we not feel that way now? Because it's not the way things are, and you don't want to stand out and be uh, the only one or what? Just about the only one that does things that please God. And along with the fact that they're constantly saying, it doesn't, God loves you anyway. God loves you anyway. And it's true, but it's not true. Well, 
because I'm not doing one of those things that make me feel convicted? As much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I I'm in church. I'm learning about the Lord. I'm done some worshiping of the Lord. And yeah, but I don't you're not. feel like I've done anything wrong. But you're not. That's not, that's not my question. My question is this. If before, when you first tasted of this great thing in God, that you would feel convicted when you did something wrong. Yet now, as time goes by, and I'm not saying, maybe this is not Oh, you. oh okay, so you mean like, uh, I'm yeah. at home and I'm, I do something wrong. Like, oh, type thing? When before it used to really eat at you, and you'd say, Lord, I don't know. If you notice... Yeah, about once a week. Oh, good. Well, maybe that's more often than we need. I don't know. But there, there's a difference. Oh, yeah, right? I screw up at least once a week. There's a difference. There's a big difference in us before and, and now. And I believe that God has got to help us get that back. We have got to get that back. we got to feel that Lord, I want to please you. Not because we're forced to or made to, but it goes back to being in love with God. Wanting to. Huh? Wanting to. Wanting to. That's all. Yeah, there you go. If I don't stop, we're going to go all night. Brother Rick's going to close us in prayer. You. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us all together and sharing in your word. Thank you for the videos that we have watched. Thank you for those who have watched us through video. Uh, please, Lord, help us walk in your path. Guide us. And if you need to, kick us upside the head every so often. We love you, and we're waiting to be with you. Amen. 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 Till next time. See you later. Yeah, see you on Sunday.